Well, we have been very productive since getting into the Sabrina, so I'm really glad we came. Uh, we've been working out, which is nice, in the gym. Bill's had dock space to do autopilot work, and today I'm gonna be working on our hatch covers, I guess is what I call them, but the, the netting that goes around this, the V-birth one, and I'm also gonna make one for the companion way. Um, this is like the old Velcro that's been on there for years and looks awful. I have my netting, which is super fine because the bugs and the Marquesas are supposed to be really bad. Um, and our old ones are just shot. They have holes all over them. So I'm doing that today and I'm borrowing Allie's sewing machine for breaking waves and <laughs> setting up in the marina. Uh, so I have space. We've decided that this marina here in Barra Navidad is the perfect place to keep chipping away at the Pacific Prep to-do list, which is coming up fast in just over a month plus from today. These hatch nets will be much needed when we're back to a full-time life on anchor. They'll allow Breeze to enter the boat, but will help keep out the bugs we've been warned about. It's one of the many projects we've got on our to-do list, one that unfortunately keeps expanding as the weeks go on. It can be hard to focus on longer term goals without the rewards of the anchor life that we treasure, but Barra Navidad offers some serious perks besides this beautiful marina. With a cute town and a dive spot, it's also got a surf break. So pursuing our hobbies here and there helps fuel the soul and remind us of what we are working for, our Pacific cruising prize that awaits. I am in the marina office, kind of like the back room, um, here with Allie, a breaking waves sewing machine. I'm going to work on those hatch covers and I already measured two out of three of them back on the boat. I started with the easy ones. Two of the hatches are perfect squares. So I was able to measure and cut those there and I'm gonna sew those ones first, just to kind of give me a little bit of momentum and confidence with this project. And then I'm going to make the pattern for the hardest one, which will be the companion way. So Allie came to help me because <laughs> I struggled. And now we are gonna just double check my measurements. Okay, measure so 17,000 times. Got the Velcro on now. Cut once. Yeah. Look how pretty that turned out. Except for that one little funky place. That looks really good. Hi. Hi, honey. Thank you. Thank you. Is Allie you brought you a beer. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm, it is like. Mm. It is. It is 5:30. Yeah. So I did the first couple of sides for Grace, but now it's her turn. So she's gonna give her a go. Yep. Good day. This is Whoa. a little harder than I thought it was gonna be. It's. It looks good though. I mean, this is what you're gonna see from inside the boat, so. Look at that beautiful line. All right, cut it and let's see how Grace did. Cut it did. and let's go check out the, the derby. Yeah. Wow. Grace the seamstress. <laughs> <laughs> she looks so bad for herself. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, hon. Yay. Wow, yeah, look how straight and clean. Pretty sure that's your line. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, Allie. Oh, oh hey guys. Oh, Tech boy. Hey. 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 Wow. Marlin, that like every 30 minutes the cut where it was hanging got bigger. Can I go closer? Yeah. 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 
Smells like a delight over here. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fish. It's like incandescent, this swordfish yeah. thing. It's beautiful. The swordfish is really cool. So every time I come in the cockpit, I've been staring at this, which is our reef two, reef line. Certainly needs to be either and for ended, like putting this damaged part behind the clutch or replaced. I have to see where it falls on the line. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the boom and uh, see what's up with it. Definitely wanna, don't want this to fail when we're crossing though. So here's the end of reef two. You see how the reading eye spliced in already. I'm gonna attach a messenger to this and pull it on through. So you can see the damage, which seems to be first six feet, five feet. So that's fine. This will definitely be beyond the clutch when the boat is reefed. It's gonna check the rest of the line carefully though, before I opt to see whether I wanna replace this or not. The rest of it's in really good shape, so I am gonna go ahead and end, -end it and not replace it. Um, I might as well flip around the other one too. This is reef two, which we've only used like a couple times in like full gales. Uh, the other one is used a lot more. These lines are from 2009. They're not that new, they're pretty old. Uh, so not a lot of wear and tear considering. So this time we're going to tie in the messenger end to the damaged portion and that will move this to the rope clutch and away from the sail. So the now where I was worried about section, the shape portion is now in the cockpit where it won't matter because as soon as the sail is reefed, it, it, all the good line is going to be between the clutch and the sail itself. It's going to go ahead and put a stopper knot in and then re-rig it on the boom. I'm just going through and uh, putting the practice reefs in just to make sure I like how it looks. Like the angles, the lines, and all that. You can see here now reef two. Now the shape portion is in the cockpit behind the rope clutch, so it'll have no load on it when the sail is being reefed. If that's reef two. So as per normal boat life, we are continuously breaking things as we prepare to cross the Pacific. Uh, for some reason, our faucet just started leaking bad a couple days ago. Um, and we got this faucet in Nova Scotia three or four years ago we were cruising up there so it's definitely a custom situation um, and so we're hoping we can fix it and we don't have to find a new faucet because um, that could be really annoying I'm just trying to refresh the o-rings of this I have uh, for a water maker we have sanitary lubricant that's for dive gears and water maker and stuff like that. Um, I'm hoping, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find this exact faucet in Mexico. So I'm gonna try to fix it first. And then if not, we'll have to get a whole new assembly. With that, we're gonna find this cartridge here. I hate when the camera's close. Are you gonna do a little test now? Uh, let's see if we'll go. I think we're out of water. Still leaking a little bit. Mm. It's a lot less. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. morning.
On top of all the great aspects of Barra is the amazing French baker who delivers by boat daily, making this place particularly special. There's only one other place in our seven plus years of cruising that had a boat which delivered baked delights to cruisers. And I think you can imagine that when the French baker comes a ringing here, it's a pretty hard call to resist. Croissants, chocolate almond, and plain croissants, and then some breads. Yeah, I think we'll try, try one, one of those. those. Thank you. All right. Oh, this is the peach. Hi, good morning. Yep. Good morning. Is that the bacon, one or is that bacon and cheese or spinach and cheese? Uh, I'll do the bacon and cheese. Yeah. Thank you. I'll take a loaf of bread as well. Gold or half? Yeah. We're back tomorrow, so it's the bread. I think I have to say whole. You want some He's a mature one. Much bread. <laughs> so I'm just working on our reef three point, which we have a reef one line, which is blue. We have the white on this side, which is reef two, but there's no reef three line. So I think it's some form of a strop to a soft shackle. Um, ideally, I wouldn't want all the load on this block alone, though, so I'd probably get around an entire boom. I'll tell you what though, it would not be easy in a full gale to be messing about with this thing. Um, so, I could either, I don't know, I'm trying to think what the best way to do. This would certainly hold, but there's not a lot of tension. Like A, I would want it down further. And you can't have all the load on one side, you have to go through the boom. Let me know in the comments if anyone's ever rigged a reef three or just two reefing lines of what you guys do. Better start thinking about it now than when I really need it though. I want to see how small the sail is, though. I've never seen a Reef 3 on our boat. Small. Hope to never see that sight. So right now I am just uh, checking out our, our whisker pole. Um, I had a little bit of grease to the jaw. It was stick starting a stick. And I also added a clip here. So I usually tie a knot to the cleats. Um, and it's usually, I kind of just make it up each time, but we may take crew on board this crossing. So it'd be nice to have our crew be able to set the pole. So if I can make it as simple as possible with a clip, um, I think that makes sense. So I'm just trying to play with it and figure out the height and where I want it. And I'll try to mark my lines, but this is a good start. When we set our whisker pole, we secure it using three lines. The four guy, which is what I am setting up right now, an after guy, and a pole top and lift. These lines create a tripod of sorts, stabilizing the pole. This is a safer and much more controlled approach than connecting the pole directly to the clue of the sail. I ran it underneath the middle so it doesn't chafe on anything. Ideally, it'd be nice to have it so I don't have to touch this four guy at all. I just drive the pole. Let me explain. So if I went over this in here, it rubs, unfortunately. But if I was driving, this would be quite simple because I could just swing it over and not have to go on the bow and putt with this. So I'm gonna play it that a little more. Uh, this is all just make everything more streamlined for our crossing. So since uh, this line is passing over the lifeline, we can try to get the line inside this cover I have for shape protection. leather protection just to keep this line from shaping. I'm picturing going downwind not touching those sheets for days on end. Probably not likely but that's what the dream is of the Pacific Crossing is just set the sails and forget it. Uh, so I'm trying to get the rig ready to go downwind for what could be 20-25 days.
Yeah, get some red boots here. This is up. Still riding, what, four legs? Three. Three? That's pretty good. Oh my god, 100% up, man. Yeah.